I'm Stephen Hicks, and our guest today is Dr. Doug Denial. He's a PhD in philosophy, uh, MA degree in political science, and uh, well-versed in philosophy and political economy. He's visiting Rockford College today to teach uh, the business ethics class, and the title of his talk was The Essence of Capitalism. Uh, as we might expect, the uh, essence of capitalism, exactly what that is, is, uh, is controversial. And you talked us through four major views. So I thought I'd ask you uh, to recapitulate some of the major themes of each. The first you spent some time on is the uh, the utility thesis, most uh, famously advocated by Milton Friedman. What is the the, uh, the utility <coughs> thesis? Well, I mean, the basic idea of the utility of view of capitalism is that uh, people are pursuing their um, their own utility. It's a kind of subjective notion of what they think uh, they like or what pleases them or what gives them satisfaction in some sense and that uh, individual actors in the system are, are pursuing as much of this personal uh, satisfaction as they possibly can get and capitalism is in a way is, is, a, is a system which allows this first of all and then allows it to be organized in a certain kind of fashion such that society uh, benefits from uh, this uh, sort of self-interested uh, pursuit and that uh, by letting people uh, do this um, we actually make people better off mm -hmm. um, and so this system recommends itself mainly because of the benefits that come to all of us uh, both as individuals and society uh, by um, allowing people to pursue their own interests. Okay. And so the utility is both at the individual and the social level. Right. Right. Individuals are pursuing their own utility, but by extension, overall social utility is also maximized. Right, exactly. Okay, now the uh, second thesis you mentioned, the uh, epistemic thesis, right, uh, differs and it's most famously credited to uh, Friedrich Hayek. Right. Uh, what are its core theses? Well, um, that thesis really, Hayek tends to focus a lot of, on uh, how the economic problem in the way is really a knowledge problem and we're trying to uh, discover ways in which to use resources and there's a presumption that human beings are essentially um, ignorant of all the circumstances that surround them, that a lot of knowledge is tacit and we need to find some way to um, get a correct value of resources and the only way to do that is to sort of let uh, knowledge uh, be localized, to let people who are familiar with a circumstance uh, be the ones who, who use that circumstance in coordination with others uh, to again benefit society as a whole so that uh, resources are not, let's say, misallocated by somebody deciding they ought to go here uh, when in fact individuals are, are uh, interested in moving it there. Mm -hmm. So the first thesis is the maximization of utility, the second is the best use of local tacit dispersed knowledge. Right, exactly. Okay. Right, the uh, third was perhaps the most distinctive. You mentioned uh, the, the Adam Smith view, except instead of the standard view of Adam Smith, you emphasize the aesthetic nature of Smith's uh, account of what capitalism is. What's aesthetic? <clears throat> well, uh, the, the simple way of talking about uh, the aesthetic uh, view is uh, that uh, capitalism is a system which takes disparate things and puts them in, in a kind of coordinated order. So that in itself is, let's say, beautiful in, in some respects. I think um, the interesting thing about uh, beauty uh, in, in this context is that Smith is saying we don't do things just because they're useful for us or even that we like them. We sometimes are motivated by the conception of them, that mm -hmm. is, how they look in, in combination with each other. And what's interesting about capitalism, is, as I'm interpreting it in this way and, and trying to give a sort of different take on Smith than the, than the standard one, uh, is to suggest that, well, maybe part of the thing that recommends it to Smith or capitalism to Smith despite some flaws that he sees in it, is the fact that it does actually meet our criteria of, uh, of beauty. That is, we're attracted to it because, in fact, uh, it's more than just being useful to people. It actually uh, is pleasing to contemplate. Mm. And uh, that, I think, is a somewhat unusual and, and less well-known reading of Smith, but I think 
as I tried to show in my talk, that it's actually there. Right, and the less well-known reading uh, partly is that you're drawing heavily on theory of moral sentiments, whereas right. most people naturally extract a few passages from the Wealth, wealth of, of Nations. nations. Right. Uh, you also uh, strikingly read the, the passage about the poor man's son. Right. Uh, and what was the import of that passage? Well, part of it was to suggest that even with certain things about human beings or human nature, let's say, uh, that we might not regard as, as uh, perhaps the most desirable, morally or otherwise, nevertheless capitalism uh, is able to turn that into a social benefit, mm -hmm. even though it's a kind of flaw looked at on, on an individual level. And the, the poor man's son is visited uh, through the anger of heaven with ambition and wants all this stuff. Well, that poor man's son may realize later that all that effort is actually not going to bring him as much benefit as he originally thought. But nonetheless, in pursuing it, uh, we're all, in a way, made better off because mm -hmm. the wheels of industry turn by the ambition that people have. Even if we were to look at that specific case and say, well, uh, I, th I think you've over-exaggerated, let's mm -hmm. say, uh, the benefit that you're going to get by owning a Mercedes or something like that. All right, so the base of the system in Smith's view might be ambition, a little bit of envy, and an illusion. Right, but nonetheless, the system transforms those into social it, Into social benefit, okay. socially beneficial things. Um, okay. And, uh, you know, he, he points out that we often admire the wrong people. I mean, the people that philosophy would recommend we shouldn't admire, we often do admire. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, the system can still transform that into something beneficial. It actually doesn't destroy the system. Okay. The fourth uh, view that you mentioned is uh, Ayn Rand's self-fulfillment thesis. What's uh, distinctive about Rand's well, I think partly because she really does focus on the moral uh, as the center issue with capitalism, not its benefits. I mean, she admits the benefits, but uh, her central focus is on the moral, and I think that's an unusual take uh, when you look at the typical defenses of, of capitalism historically. But she also uh, seems to understand it as a system which encourages and in a way unleashes the creative potential that human beings have, and that this is something if we put it in the benefits category, that, that really uh, recommends it, uh, more so than, let's say, the specific goodies that capitalism might actually produce, uh, the real goodie, if you will, is that human beings are allowed to unleash their creative potentials and, and develop themselves uh, to the fullest possible extent. Mm. So the, uh, the freedom and the encouragement that capitalism has, uh, as you put it, unleashes human creativity right. uh, in whatever direction the individual so chooses that's the primary value and a secondary value then would be the benefits that all of us share as a right. result of the system there.